Hmm. All right. So, hey, you guys. So, I haven't been updating this vlog for the past couple of months, and I'm sure you've guessed why after reading the title of this vlog. So, a couple of months ago, I found out that I am pregnant. Okay, it was the best news um, I've received ever um, for the past year. You know, it has been a blast. It has been an epic turnaround of events for 2020 for me. So it's such a big news. But then one of the disadvantage was having this pregnancy symptoms, which I'm going to cover on this vlog. Um, I'll tell you the things that I've learned for the past couple of months after discovering that I'm pregnant and I'm going to cover these things that I haven't heard from anyone or any one of my friends who have been pregnant or maybe I haven't just been paying attention. So these vlog right here are for those people who are looking forward to their pregnancy and just so you know, um, you are not alone in this. We're all in this together. And well, I'll go through it. Okay. So the first thing I, the first symptom or the first thing that I learned what, uh, about things pregnant women experience is that you suffer a lot from constipation. Indeed. So... I got a lot of um, bathroom breaks. Um, I would go to the toilet pretty much often. Nowadays, you know, you'll be a little gassy. Not little, but so much gassier than before. You know, it's really, really difficult trying to control all these gurgling sounds from your stomach. And um, yeah, that's the first thing that I've experienced. The first thing that I really hated about, um, like of all of the symptoms, is that every morning when I wake up, I have this constipation. Not just every morning. I have it in the afternoon or in the evening. It's just getting worse as days or weeks pass by. Um, definitely, you'll suffer from constipation. And, you know, living, living here in Russia... Um, or in a Russian village where I have to go to the toilet outside where it gets minus or negative 20 degrees Celsius, it's really very difficult because whenever I have these urges, I'll have to put in all my jacket, my hat, my socks, my, my thick pants, you know, all these things, my boots, just to get to the bathroom or to the toilet. And yeah, it's it's been a struggle, but I hope I'll survive this. This is just my second month of pregnancy. And um, I've read somewhere that it gets worse as you go along. So I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> I've been telling my husband that, okay, what if my stomach is this big and I really have to go to the toilet? Please do something. I don't think I'll be able to go out. But um, yes, I think uh, that will be the first thing that you'll have to prepare for once you get pregnant is that you'll suffer a lot from constipation, from a lot of gassy things in your stomach, and it's not pretty. Um, I cannot imagine still working in the office and having to feel this constipation. I don't know how pregnant who are working women you know, survive this. Um, so far, uh, the only thing, the only thing that I do because I don't want to take any kind of medicine, is that I would just you know follow my ass's signals and just go to the bathroom. Yes, yeah, sorry, excuse me if you're eating something and you're watching this video, but really this is the first symptom. Okay, you'll suffer from constipation a lot. Okay, so for the second thing. Okay, that I want to share with you is that your boobs get three times bigger. Okay, mine already got one time bigger. And with the, the materials that I have been reading, it says that I have to prepare for 
or I have to start purchasing bigger bras. Actually, um, I haven't really started yet because I'm not sure what would be the right size for me. Um, I'm not sure um, how big it's going to get, how my how big my boobs are going to get, um, like at the end, uh, or how many should I get, you know? So just that my boobs would feel so tender, so firm, um, and they're painful in the morning. It's like, okay, remember when, when you get um, period, when you get your monthly period, you have this, um, how should I say it? You have this pain in your breast. So it doubles or triples up when you get pregnant. You know, this pain every morning, like, oh, this breast, they're getting, um, they're getting heavier as weeks pass by. And from the materials that I have been reading, it's going to get a lot bigger, um, especially your nipples, um, because this is to prepare your body in producing milk. So, yeah, I think that's the second thing. Um, my husband liked it that my body is changing and that I'm becoming... Um, I'm becoming um, more fluffy. Um, I don't enjoy it because I had it before when I was, you know, having um, a lot of these fats. So um, when I was fat, I had big breasts. And when I lost all of these weight, um, you know, it, my breast. Uh, the, the fat from my breast followed along. So I'm not sure if I want it back or not. But if that's, um, if that's going to be a good thing um, for, for your children in the future, like this is where they will get milk. So I guess it will be good for them. So there's just no choice. There's no choice. You'll, I'll just have to deal with it. Okay, so the third thing, the third thing that I, I have encountered is having morning sickness. Okay, um, when you heard about morning sickness, you think, okay, you'll just have to show up in the morning like what you see in the movies. But actually, that's not the case. You know, morning sickness is just the term. Um, morning sickness can also be felt in the afternoon or in the evening you know, throughout the day. So these morning sickness should have been called all day sickness because that's the truth. Okay. And it's not pretty. It consists of throwing up or the urges of having to throw up. Um, also, you'll feel weaker. You'll feel um, you want to go to sleep or something. Um, again, I'm not sure how these pregnant women who go to work manage it um nowadays i'm thankful or and i'm grateful that i can work from home um that i don't have to go to the office um that's because i started my business since last year and so that means i'm able to hold um get hold of my own time get hold of my own effort energy and whatsoever um, I started a um, few businesses last year while I was getting ready to be pregnant and while I was migrating to, uh, trying to migrate to Russia. Um, I think it's one of, uh, or it's a part of my designing your ideal life um, elements. I knew that I won't be able to raise a family or survive my career if I get pregnant you know i know my capabilities and knowing the stress that comes with my work before it's just um not possible for me so um you know i've been i've been thinking a lot for the past five years because i know where i want to see myself in um when i get to the to, to this age okay so last year or last year i started passion hustles Passion Hustles is a project where I help small businesses thrive and at the same time, individuals who would like to pursue 
their side hustles while they are working full time. Okay, so you can see here, um, as I've mentioned on my website, that the perfect time does not exist. So this is a guide. I created a course, a guide to creating um, your passion hustle and becoming your own boss. So again, I cannot imagine if I'm still working in the office, you know, still, um, you know, especially nowadays where it's not possible to get all the benefits or especially nowadays, it's not really easy to get sick leave or medical leave um, just to um, have your maternity check up. So I don't think it would have been possible um, if I would still be working. So I'm not sure how other women manage it. I I applaud you guys, you know, um, but this kind of lifestyle, it's not for everyone. Not everyone can survive it. Not everyone could hustle while they're raising a family, um, you know, while spending 10 to 12 hours in the office. So, okay, so this is what it looks like. So... I would like to quote what Benjamin Franklin said, like some people die at 25 and aren't buried until 75. So what I would like to highlight is that, you know, if you're thinking of starting a passion project, of course, it's not necessary that you have to earn money from it, but you just got to start somewhere. Um, but as you know, passion hustle is essential nowadays. You know, whether you have a full-time job or looking for what's next in your career, more people are quitting their nine to five um, because of, as you know, technology advancement. You know, it, you can uh, you can start pursuing what you've always loved to do. So this is a course that includes concepts, um, realistic tried and tested approach in starting a side hustle, and all of the lessons are bite sized comes with worksheets and, and actionable exercises. And it also gets you an exclusive community with like-minded individuals, you know, in the same journey as you. You know, I have people who have taken this course before and I've seen them how they started their passion hustles during the pandemic and it's really very useful. Okay. Okay, so this course is for you. If you're working in corporate and tired of making your bosses rich, and this one is for you if you want to quit your job in a few years, you know, it's not going to be a fast road. There's, there are things that you need to learn along the way. And I've got to be honest with you, you cannot just quit your job next month or in the six months um, after taking this course. You know, you have to start your passion hustle and start growing it first before um, before you know being able to quit your full-time job okay so these are the things that I would cover in this course so one of them is identifying your purpose and developing a passion hustle idea and building a system that works and ensuring quality so that's it yeah all of the things that you'll have to know including dealing with failure, leadership skills, and using social media for marketing. Okay, sorry, let's go back. Um, okay, so I'm done with morning sickness, being an all-day sickness symptom. Okay, so the fourth thing that you'll have to encounter when we're pregnant is that you'll have these crazy, crazy cravings. And you've got to be prepared for that. You have to be near the fridge. You have to be near... Um, a food court yeah you'll need a food court because you'll need a place with plenty of variety of food you know sometimes I'd like to have uh, fried chicken next thing I know I want to have soup next thing I know I want to have sushi so yeah you've got to be innovative when it comes when it comes to your taste buds okay I used to drink coffee as you can see this YouTube channel is entitled Coffee and Fly, but yeah, there's no more coffee for me for at least for the next seven months. So yeah, coffee can wait. Mm, so I'll have to deal with all of these different things. I used to love chocolate, but then every time I eat chocolate, I feel like 
I would want to throw up. So I stopped eating chocolate. Um, onion. Onion is one of the things I would try to avoid. Um, and eggs. I used to love frying eggs, you know, in uh, especially in the morning. But nowadays, I just couldn't. Um, sometimes I would eat one one egg or maybe three eggs in a week. But before, I would eat it every day, like two eggs a day. And so, yeah, you'll have crazy, crazy cravings. Um, I had this instances where um, I craved for this mi goreng instant noodles and also um, spicy sauce. Nowadays, when I sit on the table, um, I would have three types of spicy sauce in front of me. Tabasco, um, sriracha, um, the other one would be that spicy Chinese um, spicy sauce. So, you know, you'll have crazy cravings and you have to be prepared for that. Okay. Okay, so thing number five, fifth thing, mood swing is common. And I think I have to say that I'm so thankful and grateful that I'm surrounded by uh, my husband and my uh, my family, you know, who have been very understanding with my mood swings because really it's not that easy. Sometimes, mm, you know, sometimes I'll I just cry because I'm feeling homesick. Um, sometimes I cry for no reasons, or sometimes. I would be really very happy um, about some things. And then later on, I would be disappointed, frustrated. You know, I couldn't understand until later on, I would realize that, okay, I've been acting crazy. I should stop this. So, right. Moon swing is common and you have to accept that. And then you have to prepare your family, your friends, your partner, your husband. Um, tell them what you're going through. Um and that they'll and that you'll need their support now more than ever. So yeah, mood swing is common. I'll probably talk about this like having to deal with depression, postpartum much later on. Um, but now I'm feeling good. Like see, I can vlog now. That means I'm feeling a lot better, that I can handle my mood swing a lot better. So yeah, if you're dealing with this. Just know that it's not going to be forever. Okay, so the sixth and the last thing that I'd like to share with you is that you don't have to eat twice as much. Okay, so you'll hear from people that, okay, now that you're pregnant, you'll have to feed yourself, you know, twice as much, twice as much because you now have a baby, but that's not true. You know, that would just end you up in a place where you don't want to be like you don't want to gain so much weight because later on when the baby comes out um it's going to be difficult going back to your original shape and i've done a lot of research about this uh, one of them is working out every day you know there are some easy workout um, routine recommended for the first trimester and then yeah so there you go you'll just have to do a lot of movement, even if you're not feeling good, even if you're not in the mood, even if, you know, you're feeling very weak. I think the best thing to do is doing some stretches. You know, there are a lot of yoga stretches you can do when you're pregnant. And then some aerobics as well. You know, that, that will be easy. You know, you don't have to be running all the time. You don't have to be sweating all the time. Just a little bit of movement here and there, you know, can help you a lot. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Um, make sure that uh, make sure to check out my website, coffeeandfly.com. So again, I just want to highlight that having flexible time um, is important when it comes to raising or starting a family. You know, especially us for us women. Um, I want to be hands on when it comes to my family, so I would need a lot of flexible timing here and there and it wouldn't have been possible if i didn't start my fashion hustle a couple of years back like you can imagine this is a long 
time in the planning. So yeah, check out my blog or my website, coffeeandfly.com. And you can see the link in there if you want to uh, sign up for my Passion Hustles course. Okay, and yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoy this video and yeah, make sure to like and subscribe.